Hey, hey. Let's see who's hanging out tonight. Happy Sunday to all of you. Tonight, we're going to color it walrus. Um, because I showed you the dock last night, um, I kind of want to show you it again with something different. So, um, I don't, oh, there's my ruler right there. It's like, <laughs> you're at the fireworks? Oh my gosh, Joanne. <laughs> Silly girl. You probably can't hear anything. Um, it's seven o'clock here, so it's still like daylight. Michelle, you're still running errands? What the hey, hey, girl. <laughs> so I have this cute little walrus. He's from the I Am the Walrus set. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Um, so they have the fun sentiments. I am the walrus. I will wal walrus be your friend. This cute little bucket that you could put full of fish. Um, oh, about 15 more minutes. You probably can't hear anything I'm saying. Um, so we're going to color the little walrus. And since he's a fairly quick color, we might have time to do the background for him too. So I'm going to grab my Copic marker color blend stand. And, um, I'm going to color him more this color than the brown. Um, just because of the background that I'm doing. So I'm going to make them a little more gray. Um, so here we go. I think I'm going to use my W's. And um, I think I'm going to start with W7. I'm going to start pretty dark. Seven. I am going to use six and five. Then I'm going to jump to three. And then I'm going to jump to one. Okay, so seven, six, five, three, one. Because seven is really dark and um, six is a lot lighter. So there we go. So I'm gonna start, there's a lot of artist drawn lines on here that actually show you where all of his um, shadows are. I'm gonna move my chair down so I'm a little bit closer to my coloring. So I'm just gonna start by using the artist drawn lines. I have stamped him in Memento Desert Sand, which is an awesome color for no lines coloring. And that's what we're doing tonight is the whole no lines scenario. We're gonna make him blend into his background. So what are y'all doing for 4th of July? I'm not doing anything. I'm staying at home. My husband wants to have chili dogs. I'm not a huge fan of hot dogs. Hey, Tammy, look, I decided what to color. <laughs> hey, Rinska. Um, so I'm not a big fan of hot dogs. I think they're fairly disgusting. Um, I'll eat them every once in a while, but I like really got to be in the mood. So, um, I'm just going to be having chili, <laughs> chili and chips, not chili dogs. Who's in the hot dog? Just stay at home. Yeah. Movies and PJs. That sounds amazing. Last night, the fireworks here were incredibly loud. There was somebody in our neighborhood that was lighting off fireworks. And I mean, they were pretty much right over the top of our house. Like not even kidding, not being a hyperbolist or anything. Like they were over the top of our house. So I was up pretty late um, reading my book and internally cursing. Um, hey, Kathy. Aaron number three, you love hot dogs? A lot of people do. A lot of people really love hot dogs. I am not that person. I'll eat, like tonight we had like bratwursts and, and I'm okay with that. They're, you know, more sausages. I just don't like the flavor of hot dogs. Um, there's like, I gotta be really, really in the mood. 
Yeah. Um, thankfully, in Idaho, we've had a lot of precipitation this year. So I'm pretty cool with the level of um, hydration that is on our lawn and our house and stuff. But you never know. Oh, well, that's cool, Barb. I like that. Right, a lot of people will only eat Costco hot dogs. My mom is one of those people. Only Costco hot dogs. If I eat a hot dog, it has to be done on the barbecue. I am not a fan of boiled hot dogs or my husband microwaves them. It's the weirdest thing to me. So there's that. <laughs> Hey, Cheryl, join in the debate. Do you eat hot dogs? And happy Canada Day and all that good stuff. I know it's not today, but, you know, just figured I'd throw it out there. Since we're talking about eating hot dogs and barbecue and all that stuff. Okay, I think that's all I'm gonna do. Almost burned on the outside. Not quite charred. <laughs> My mom likes hers like really. Right, see me too, Cheryl. If I'm super, super hungry or I'm like craving a hot dog, then I'm like, okay, I can eat a hot dog. So my husband wants to do chili dogs tomorrow. Um, and I'm just, ugh, just doesn't even sound good to me. So I'll have chili, but not chili dogs. Okay, so I'm gonna go around where I put that darker color and I'm gonna add this color um, over the top of it. <laughs> That's what I said, Julie. Cuckoo, could you? Yeah, none of that, none of that. I don't want no lawsuits. Gotta outline that big old tusk of his. Do you have walrus up there, Julie? In Washington? I can't remember how far down they come. Well, yeah, from the Beatles. From the people who own the estates of the Beatles. Can't be copy and no copyright stuff. For saying it. Um, at the zoo, Tyler? <laughs> My day's been well. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, I got so much accomplished today. So I've been meaning to set up my little photo tent um, to take pictures for the website. And I took a cubic buttload of photos today. I have like 1,500 pictures on my camera right now. Um, and I know for some of you that's not many. But for a person who usually has like 400-ish, that's a lot. So, um, so I got a lot of administrative stuff done. Um, I got everything submitted for the September stamp sets. So that's really good. Um... I need to talk to you guys tonight about the whole tagging thing um, at SeaWorld. Yeah, right. Um, when your tag showed up tonight for this live, did it show up differently than it has been the past few nights? Um, did it show up any differently at all whatsoever? Or did it show up exactly the same? So we're trying to deal with this whole tagging people scenario. 
And I know I put the poll out there and it seems like overwhelmingly you guys want to be tagged. You want us to use the at everyone tag because you like to know um, when we're going live. And oh, I haven't, Tammy. It showed up the same way, so it just showed up as I mentioned you in a, in a comment. It didn't show up any different. Because before I was putting it in the comments. Today I actually tagged it as a video. So I did it differently. Um... So interesting to know it shows up the same way. Anyways, so there's a huge debate out there about the whole tagging scenario. And um, here at Sweet Sentiment, we, we don't, I mean, we don't want to turn anybody off. <laughs> you just came a running. Come a running, honey. Um, my grandma used to say that to us all the time. Come a running, honey. Um, so... We don't want to turn anybody off, but at the same time, Facebook only allows us to do this one way. You can tag everyone or no one. And so it seems like since we've been able to tag, we've had a lot more people joining in the lives and actually grateful for the tag um, because they didn't know that we were going live. Um, didn't know that we were doing these coloring videos. So our viewership has actually gone way up, which is fantastic for us, but not to the detriment of, um, you know, making people angry. I definitely don't want to do that. Um, however, um, when I put the poll out there, it seems like most of you like the tag. Um... Okay, so that's what I wanted to know. Showed up right away. I usually have to scroll. I did not really notice. Okay. Okay. That's that's good feedback. Good information. Um, so a, a couple of people have asked me, you know, can Facebook change it so that it says that I'm tagged in a video as opposed to I'm tagged in a comment? And um, I don't have that control over Facebook. I mean, it would be nice, but I don't. Um, and the problem with a lot of it is as follows. If you guys are hanging out with me live and Sandy comes on to tag people to let them know that we are doing a live video, um, you guys have to sit and wait through all of the tags. So her going and tagging each person. Hey, Renska, we're live. Hey, Cheryl, we're live. Hey, Linda, we're live. And that's really annoying for you guys who are here to watch the live, um, you know, like on time or from the beginning or whatever you want to call it. So it's not really fair to you guys to have to tag people individually. Additionally, on top of that, um, we can only tag so many people before Facebook flags our accounts and puts us in Facebook jail. And we all know I'm already on Facebook parole. I don't want to go back to Facebook jail. It's not a good place. I'd stay and watch, but we are at dinner. I'll check in after you get home if you are still on. Okay. Thanks, Jen. It showed up as a tag. But did it show up as I tagged you in a live video or I tagged you in a comment? Because those are two different things. So anyways, I don't want to make people mad, but at the same time, um, it seems like the majority of you want the tag, would like us to conti continue to tag you guys. So I think that's what we're going to try to do. Um, if you don't like the tag, you can totally scroll past, like not going to hurt my feel bads. Um, but it's either all or nothing with Facebook. I either get to tag everybody or I get to tag nobody. And so that poll helped us see, oh, good, Barb. Okay, so that's better, at least. It's not like um, a comment. So anyways, it's 
it's hard. It's a hard balance. It's a hard, um, it's just, it's hard all the way around trying to please everybody. You know, you're never going to be able to please everybody, but I certainly don't want to run people off. Um, but it sounds like if you, if you look at the poll that I posted on the page, it really looks to me like the majority of people, um, overwhelmingly, the majority of people like the tag and would like to continue to be tagged. Um, so if you are not one of those people, I apologize. Um, but there is a way to turn off the notification. Um, it's actually through your cell phone, not through Facebook. You just go into your phone's um, notifications tab um, in your settings and you can turn off the notifications for Facebook. Um, what happens is, is it does turn off all notifications for Facebook. When you log into Facebook, all of your notifications will be there. It's just, it won't make your phone ping. Um, and I think that that's what a lot of you are concerned about is, you know, the amount of pings that you get. It showed up a tag. Well, yeah, it will all, always show up a tag because I tagged you um, by saying, using the at sign and saying at everyone. It's just, it'll show up as Jamie Clark tagged you in a live video or Jamie Clark tagged you in a comment. And so people are not liking that I tag them in a comment because they're thinking I'm saying something about them. If they see it's in a live video, they know I'm not necessarily talking about them. I'm just letting them know that I'm going live. It's it's semantics. It's really a nitpicky little tiny thing. Um, but it is always going to show up as a tag. So I'm working really hard to, you know get brand recognition and have you guys see what it is that we're all about, get some fun, cool coloring tips, um, hang out with us and, you know, just have fun. So um, I apologize if it offends anyone, but again, there's not a whole lot I can do about it. Facebook does have us quite limited. So if you feel that you need to leave the group because of this tag, I'm awfully sorry, um, but I I wish you the best. I don't know what else to say. Tagged you in a live video, yep. Mine says live video, yep. Okay, so it's better to do it this way, to tag you in the live video. And then you're not getting comments, right? So it's not saying like, so-and-so commented on a video that you're on. Or a video that you're tagged in. Because that would be horrible to get like 700, you know. <laughs> such and such commented on a video that you're tagged in and you get like 700 of those. That would be awful. I don't think it does that, but I sure hope it doesn't do that. So I'm going to color in these big old tusks here. Just trying to do what's right for everybody. You know, I'll never get, I'll never please everyone. Um, but I'm certainly trying. And like I said, it's definitely upped our viewership because people actually see that we're live when we're live by using the tag. So that's great. They can go away. We want to have fun and learn and have great stories. Thank you, Cheryl. That makes me feel so much better. So much better. I will say it is the vast majority of you guys that do like the tag or like don't care one way or the other. And so that's that's great. Um, I really appreciate that. So definitely a good thing for me. Okay, so our walrus is colored. Look at how fast that was. It was like less than 20 minutes. So guess what? We're going to start coloring this dock again. So remember last night how we did this whole background? Um, yay! Thanks, Cheryl. I'm so happy that you're here. So I'm going to draw a very similar background for the walrus. So I'm going to grab my E41 
we're just going to get right to it. So I'm going to start and I want the line to be straight, but I don't care if it's straight in relationship to the card. Um, you're very fast. Like I said last night, 20 minutes for you is an hour for me. Really? I see. I don't think that I'm that fast, but apparently I've colored enough live that I've sped up. And Sandy told me that I'm fast as well. She's like, you are a wicked fast colorist. Like you're wicked fast and you don't even realize it. And I'm like, wow, I had no idea. Like not even a clue. Not even the slightest. Okay, so here's the basis of my doc. That's what she said. <laughs> oh, Julie, how I love thee. Let me count the ways. So I want to do this at a very severe angle um, because this walrus is on this dock and I want it to look like um, in perspective. So I'm going to start with a pretty severe angle and then I'm going to look at it and see if that's what I want. Yeah, I think that's about right. So then, just like last night, I'm going to line this up. I'm telling you, I reuse my ruler a lot. Yes, you are. I make coloring so easy. Well, I'm glad I make coloring so easy. I just didn't realize that it was so super fast. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing that I'm fast. I guess for the sake of the lives, it's a good thing because then I'm not on here for like hours and hours and hours. But for the sake of duplication, um, y'all probably aren't super stoked that I'm fast. But at least you can like play and pause and play and pause. Click, pause, <laughs> click, pause. <laughs> Oh, Julie. Okay, so same thing. I'm going to draw the little posts in. I'm going to make these ones a little bit wider. Okay, so we've got a post right there. We're going to have a post behind this dude. This is kind of a, a retake of the live last night to show you guys um, that you can use that background in more than one way. Um, Sandy said today something that was a really great idea was, you know our little fisherman kits from the May release? They would be super cute because like fishing off of the dock here would be like adorable. Okay. Learning and enjoying, that's great. That's, that's what the whole point is here. So again, just like I did last night, I'm going to come in in between these and make the slats a little bit thinner. And then I'm gonna add some thickness to the dock. So I can't draw. <laughs> um, this is just lines. This is very much just lines. And so I use my roller as a crutch. Um, yeah, these rulers are great. They are amazing. It's just a little six inch ruler. Um, there's the website, sztd.com. Um, Marianne Samuelson got this for me, so I honestly don't know where she got it from, if she got it from that website or not. Um, but hey, there it is. So these guys like to hang out in the ocean. Um, 
like so I have that ocean so I have this all like this is all gonna be like ocean and then um last night I did like a sunset but today I think I'm gonna have um some hills and some mountains so I'll make this like a hill Just so you guys have something a little bit different. Look, it looks like a butt. And then we'll have mountains come down. Yeah, okay. So we're just gonna. Yeah, that's true. That's true, Julie. Yeah, I can't, I can't draw. Drawing is, drawing is a difficult thing for me. I can barely draw a stick figure when you're playing hangman. So let's not even, let's not even go there. Okay, so again, I'm gonna do like the weathered wood thing. So I'm gonna start by using some of the W's that I already used. So I have W7 here. And Oh, you know what? I probably don't want to use this because it's going to be so close to his shade. So I'm going to switch that W for T7. Um, nope, I lied. T has a warm base too, so I'm going to use N. N does not have a warm base. Just gonna color right over the top of that. So I'm gonna make his shadow. My husband's been binge watching Animal Kingdom all day. Crime scene, but with presentation, I'm getting better. <laughs> yeah, my stick figures. I always tell people, if I sit still long enough, I could probably draw flies. Ah, but I'm bum. Shh. It's like my dad joke. For real, I actually did learn that joke from my dad, so it is truly a dad joke. <laughs> it is truly 100% a real bona fide dad joke. the edge of the dock here. Okay. So then since I've done that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some little striations to the wood. Just so it gives it that really old weathered look okay darn it late again Milligan what am I gonna do with you okay so then I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna go straight down with the boards Okay, and then I'm gonna go across this. And like I said last night, um, the first lines I draw in straight just so I have a guide. But after that, 
Um, the stock is supposed to be like weathered and worn, so I don't really care so much if the boards continue to be straight. So they kind of have different um, weather patterns to them. Okay, so I'm definitely going to add some texture to this. Sorry, I just realized that I hadn't finished my sentence. <gasps> Big sister! Hello! I'm so happy you're here. I'm coloring a walrus. Did you see any walrus on your cruise? See, this is why I like using the at everyone tag. You made a pillow? Well, that's awfully ambitious of you. Did you like sew a pillow? Sewing is definitely not part of my wheelhouse. I'm telling you people, I'm one of the least crafty people you will ever meet. I'm just, I'm just not a crafty person. But whales and bears, bears are what's important here. I mean, whales are cool and all, but Bears are what's important. Did you see any polar bears? I really want to see a polar bear. Just saying. Yes, Alaska. In case you hadn't gathered that, definitely Alaska. Okay, so there's my N7. Now I'm gonna graduate into some of the browns because after all this is wood, um, and you quilted it, holy crikeys. So this is wood, so I want it to be brown. I just want it to have that really weathered look. And don't worry, I'm going to blend these a little bit better. I'm just going in, first of all, to add the shadowing. And then I'm going to come back in and add a little bit more. No polar bears, not far enough north. Well, dang it. I'm going to need you to go farther north, and I'm going to need you to take some polar bear pictures for me. Okay, if you could put that on your schedule, that would be great. Can you guys hear the TV? It feels like it's really loud to me, but maybe they're just, you know screaming at each other it is animal kingdom after all and most of it is them screaming at each other or shooting each other so it's a very intense show i don't know if any of you watch it i've seen a couple of episodes i'm not totally invested in it at all but it is a very intense show. Okay, good. You can hear your TV, that's good. <laughs> that was very fun. I've never done a cruise, big sister is, how is it? I mean, have you done cruises before? Anybody who's done a cruise, I need you to talk to me about cruises. I want to try like a three-day one. Um, 
but I'm worried about my anxiety issues and being like trapped. So I'm very concerned. But I think like a three day one might, might be okay. I don't know. And Lee, was it cold the whole time on the Alaskan cruise? Were you always bundled up? How was it to go outside on the deck? All these things, all these questions I have. We loved it even though we were, there were supply, well, there's supply chain issues for everything everywhere. So that's normal. <laughs> Archie was just at my door. He's like, hey mom, what you doing in there? Why you close the door on me? He's been barking all day long. I don't know what his deal is today. I mean, he usually barks sporadically, but today he's all wound up. That's for probably, I'd spend money for a room with a balcony. Otherwise it was kind of being like at a casino. Hmm. Have you done longer cruises, Julie, or just like three days, seven days? Lee, how long was your cruise? I always like to dream. I like to live vicariously through other people. Did you catch any cool Pokemon while you were up there? Chilly but sunny. We live in the mountains though, so we love the not hot weather. Yeah, I rip it. Yours were seven days. I, I feel like most cruises are seven days. Anybody else feel like that? Or is that just a random observation that I'm placing on the cruise industry for no reason? So we're just coloring in this dock. Oh, really? Okay, guys, what you think so far? Doing good? I know, me too, Tammy. I'm always like, man, I'd love to do an Alaskan cruise. I want to do one of those river cruises too, Julie, but excuse me. I want to do, hey, pal. Um, wants me to go on one, but like you, I have anxiety issues with it. Right, Milligan? See, right. Hi, Kim. Um... Yeah, see, I don't swim in the ocean either. There is too many things in that water that can eat me. So I keep my butt out the ocean for real. I am, I am not an ocean swimmer. I went to Mexico a long, long time ago. A long time ago. And um, the guy who I was with wanted to do some um, snorkeling. And I was like, sure, let's do this. Why not? Yeah, I don't swim in the lake either. Um, I don't swim. So let's just throw that out there. Um, and so I was like, sure, why not? Let's let's go snorkeling. So, you know, we get this little excursion boat and we're down in Puerto Vallarta. And mind you, I loved Puerto Vallarta itself. I actually loved Viejo Vallarta. Um Right, I don't eat fish either. <laughs> um, 
And so we we go out on this excursion and they show us how to use the snorkels and all that good stuff. And so the girl who's super scared of, you know, doing this, not that I was like super duper scared, but I was just like, I'm not a strong swimmer. And so I think they could tell that I was just nervous about the whole scenario. So anyways, the little Mexican tour guide guy, he takes the bag of pan dulce, which is like all the sweetbreads, and he had crumbled them up. And so he like opens the bag right next to me. And so of course, all the fish come swimming over and swarm me. And what happens but a freaking eel, a nope rope, an ocean nope rope, um... And no to that water. Give me a pool. <laughs> yeah, right? Give me a pool. Anyways, an eel comes swimming and it swims like between my thighs. Um, and it, <laughs> it bites me. The eel bites me. And I'm in Mexico and I'm not happy about it. So... Um, I didn't want to go to some Mexican doctor because I didn't know. I think I was more scared of the Mexican doctor than the eel biting me. Um, or like a Mexican emergency room because all I'd ever heard was horror stories. So I just kind of dealt with it for a couple of days and it got super red. It didn't get infected or anything, but it just was like not a happy, it was not a happy camper with the whole scenario. Um, just didn't make me feel very good so <laughs> excuse me I know a brain eating amoeba yes <laughs> um I don't mean to laugh but you're totally my people <laughs> so I just keep my butt out the ocean from then on I don't think I've ever been in the ocean since then like I'll go in like ankle deep and and that's the end of my story so, for those of you who think that I am lame, that's cool. I'm lame. See, go north. Right? No tropical poisonous things. And you're not going to get in the ocean when you're in Alaska. I'm just saying. It's just not going to happen. Because it's too freaking cold. And you don't want to dodge the ice blocks to do that. So... wasn't super duper happy with the color that that E70 did. So that's why I'm adding this color. Look at this dock. I really am pleased with it. I like this one better than the one last night. All right. So now I'm going to go through mostly the same colors. <gasps> you did? Oh, I bet that was super duper awesome. and do the posts here. Thanks, Tammy. Thanks, Lee. Thanks, Rinska. Yeah, Barb, for sure. I know a lot of people will um, watch my classes and stuff the first time, and they'll just watch and, and learn. And then the next time they watch, um, they, you know, play, pause, rewind, all the things so that they can try to duplicate it or, you know, make their own or whatever. Yeah, I'm freehanding the doc. Well, I kind of cheated in that I used a ruler, but, you know. That's about as much as I freehand. I just feel like if you use a ruler to start with your background, even just anything, like anything you can possibly figure out that has a straight line, using the ruler kind of gives you that little touch of confidence that you need. Um, I don't know if you can download the lives, but we do put them on YouTube afterwards, so you can download them from YouTube but I don't think you can download them from here on Facebook. So um, 
but we do put them all on YouTube when we're done. However, Facebook's being a butthead lately. Watch, I'm gonna get put in Facebook jail for saying that. And it's not letting us download. So my two lives from the Kraken, um, it's not letting me download them at all. And then Sandy has two lives that's not letting her download. So as soon as we can get those downloaded and put on YouTube, we will. But everything else on YouTube is definitely downloadable and savable. Thanks, Kim. That's so sweet. I just feel like the ruler adds that little bit of self-confidence that you need to get started because it is really hard to start on a blank page. Like, I will definitely give you that. So even after all of the backgrounds that I've done, it's still hard for me to start on a blank page sometimes. So... Don't feel like you're being weird or different or whatever because it's definitely, definitely a thing. Definitely, definitely, definitely a thing. Okay. So there we go. There's our little doc so far. Okay. So um, I'm going to... I don't know why, but I like to do this. So I'm gonna go for the hills the next. And I feel like he's gonna be like green hills and like snow-capped mountains and all of that stuff. So that's that's what I'm envisioning. So I'm gonna start um, like pretty dark and I'm gonna start with this like darker hill in front. Or at least I'm gonna put it in front. How do you like them apples? Now the point to the background is that your background is not the star of the show. Um, my walrus is the star of the show. So you don't want the background to be so intricate that it takes away from what it is that's in your foreground. Um, you just wanna give the suggestion of what what's hanging out there. You wanna tell the story. So, you know, this little walrus is hanging out here. Um, in his little alcove, just chilling. Um, he's enjoying the sunshine of the day, you know, all of that kind of stuff. He is not, we're not taking the star of the show away from him. So I used G85, and honestly, I can't even find it on here. Oh my God, am I blind? I guess I'm blind because I honestly don't see it. There's G82, but I don't see G85. Wow. Um, so I actually am gonna go into G82, I think. Actually, I'm gonna go G94. Here's more of that fast coloring for you, Cheryl. <laughs> Up four rows. Still not seeing it. YG09. Oh my gosh, am I super duper blind I am super duper blind because I'm just straight up not seeing it <laughs> was three over 28 49 oh my gosh are you guys laughing at me I bet you're laughing at me super duper hard
D29. Oh, there it is, right there. Right there. Do you see that? So I use markers that are connected to each other. And so when you're using this, here I'll show you, Tammy. So the hex chart helps you by connecting colors to one another so that you know what's in the same blend set so that you can choose your medium and your dark tone. Is everybody like, yay, you found it. Um, so I just used G94. So now a good blend would be G96, or I'm sorry, YG63, because they're right next to each other. Um, but see how they're pretty close to the same color? So I'm actually going to go one more over. So I could go to G24 or I could go to G21. So it just helps you to see like what's in the vicinity so you know how to blend them together. So I think I'm going to use G24. I love G24. It's one of my favorite colors. I know, right? Aha! Zutlo! I have found it. I told you guys it's been a day been a day. I actually did get some sleep last night. I had a good conversation with my friend Jules last night. We were chit-chatting about all of our favorite things. And um, I was kind of starting to feel anxious last night, but that conversation helped me. So I didn't feel so anxious and I was able to get some sleep. Okay, and then, so since I used G24, now I'm gonna use G21 because it's lighter. Oh, there it is. Yeah, you two should get together. You two would have fun together. Kind of makes me jealous. I want to be there too. So see how these colors just blend nice and soft together. And then I have right here where the sun kisses the hill, and I'm gonna do a much lighter color. So I used G21, I'm gonna use YG61. So I jumped a row, but see how it's so much lighter? It's only hop, skip, and a jump away. You're right. Problem is, is right now, that hop, skip, and a jump costs a million dollars because of gas prices. So I'm going to use the side of the marker just so I get broader brush strokes. It gives me a softer finish and I'm not back and forth coloring. I'm coloring from one side to the other. Look at that nice soft finish. Hooray! So the hills behind are generally lighter than what the hill in front is. So I'm going to start a little lighter. I'm going to use G43. Oh, G43. I was looking at the YGs and I'm going, I can't find it. <laughs> yeah, it is sad. Super duper. And then where this hill comes out, Oops, am I on the screen? Okay, where this hill comes out from this one. Okay. So... 43, then I'm gonna use, I'm gonna jump up here and use some of the YGs and make it a little bit more yellow. So I think I'm gonna try YG 13. It might be a little bit too dark for what I want, but we're gonna test it out anyways. So I'm gonna start testing it in the shadow. 
this is where Sandy and I kind of differ is I just go at it sometimes. Um, I will do a little swatch if I'm trying to be careful about picking my colors. So this is a little bit darker than the one I already used. Fine and dandy with me. I'm just gonna go back to the one I already used to lighten this one up a little bit. See, no harm, no foul. <laughs> YG sounds like wedgie. Hi, Terry, welcome, welcome. Um, then I'm gonna use YG11. I'm just gonna start saying wedgie Michelle just for the heck of it, just to mess with you. There we go. Pretty cool. Okay, then I'm gonna come over here. Um, why not back and forth? Um, because if you use back and forth blending, um, you will drag the dark from here into there and the dark from here into there and it'll make your highlight muddy so it won't be as light. So I push out and I push out. That's a good question. I'm glad you asked questions. That's what we're here for. This is G82. The good thing, Tammy, is, is that you're asking questions that other people are probably thinking. So I'm glad that you're brave enough to ask them. So totally off topic. Apparently the live plant I bought for my fishes had a snail larva in it because I have the cutest little snail all of a sudden. Aww. <laughs> Yeah, Julie, the thing you sent me earlier about cursing was freaking hilarious. I loved it. I'm sure you laughed at my response. This is like a minty color. I really love it. It's great for coloring mint ice cream, but I figured why not have a minty mountain sign. In the big rock candy mountain. And then G20. Julie spent a weekend with me. Oh, look it, there was black on there. Dang it. Um, Julie spent a weekend with me at the Washington show. So she was with me all weekend. So I taught her the ways of cursing. <laughs> I don't mean to, I really don't. But it, it just, I open my mouth and bad words fall out. And it's a thing. Okay, so there's our little hills. So now um, I'm gonna do some mountains. I'm coloring a digital image along with you, but not like you are doing. Ooh, what image are you coloring? Did you download the hex chart? Yes, the hex chart is definitely a must. Um, and I have made it smaller so that I can travel with it. So this is the hex chart and then this is the grays that are on the second sheet. Um, Linda's watching. Yay. I like when Linda's watching. It makes me happy. Okay, so um, we're going to do some rock. We're going to do some rock work here. You have to go help burn wood? That's that's no fun. You don't need to be out there burning wood. So just like last night, I'm gonna put some shadows in these 
in these there heels. A Scrappy Boy image or a Stampin' Bella image? SB can be a lot of things. <laughs> I'm just realizing that. Oh, Sherry Baldy. See? Wasn't even either of the ones that I said. I'm glad you're coloring along with me. Is Dorothy on the docks? <laughs> Hanging out by the ocean? The yellow brick road led her to the ocean? I know Julie's yellow brick road would lead her to the ocean for sure. Rolo dies? Oh, Rolodex dies? Yes. What about the Rolodex dies? They're from Scrappy Boy. She could be. <laughs> Did you order them? Yeah, Scrappy Boy. Did you order them, Julie? Or you just mean because of the release? at the end of the month. The Scrappy Boy Rolodex dies go absolutely amazing with our color cards. And then you can put our color cards in your Rolodex. They're already lighting off fireworks here, guys. It's, it's seriously not dark. It's daylight. Now look, I am doing back and forth here because I want all of this to like smudge out. I want it to bleed so it looks like rock. So see that? Color cards, oh my goodness gracious. Here, let me grab them so you can see, Barb. Um, they're like color swatches and I have a lot of random things in my Rolodex, so hold on just a second. So, the Scrappy Boy cards cut out like this. And so, it shows you um, different... These are all the blonde ones. And then I have red and orange. And yellow so it gives you ideas on color blends different greens we have teal and blue and we have this is the blue and we have purple and um, pink there's blonde again I've done two sets of blondes here's brunettes that are new in the shop and dark hair. So very cool little cards that you can put in your Rolodex file. Um, they are all separate because different people had different ones. They were all released at different times. Um, so Barb, when you get the file, it comes with a fully colored sheet and a blank sheet because everybody's printer prints just a little bit different. So um, the color isn't true when you print it off of your printer. 
You think you've seen something? I don't think you've seen something. You just saw a card that I made. This was from Stampin', that's from Stampin' Bella, and it's from a class I did a long time ago. And that one's from Rabbit Hole Designs and um, Unity Stamp. These are all little cards that I made for my Rolodex. So these are all just little memory decks cards that I made. That's one that Marsha made for me. So, yeah. Anyways, so. Back to this. Um, Barb, they're on our website. So. There you go. Thanks. Um, we're also doing a retreat this coming, um, well, in two weekends. Not this weekend, but the following weekend. So if you are interested in signing up for the retreat, that would be amazing. But you need to sign up really soon. I am going to go ahead and do a sunset here. Just saying. Um, you got to sign up really soon because I leave on Thursday. And if you want me to mail you your kit, you got to you gotta buy it by Thursday so that I know. So that I know to mail you your kit. Okay, Barb. Yeah, they're all called color cards. And they are in the shop. And there's all different ones. And they come with the blank file that has the marker numbers written on them. And then they come with the um, colored file. And that way you can print them both out. I do suggest getting Sweet Sentiment coloring paper with them. Um, you want to print them on whatever paper you're gonna color on. And so obviously I highly suggest Sweet Sentiment paper. That's what I'm coloring on right now. It makes all the difference in the world. Where are my paper believers at in here? I know I got some of my pa paper girls in here. Sweet Sentiment Paper changes the game in coloring. It's got a slight shimmer to it so that all of your coloring pops. It's slightly off-white so that when you mat it against white, it makes your coloring pop even more. It is coated on the inside instead of the outside, so your coloring does not sit on top of it. Um, only paper you use now. Um, so when you're coloring with your Copics, they don't just float on top of it and then create a sticky, weird mess. It actually penetrates the paper, um, and you're staining the paper fibers, which is the best way to color. On top of that, um, it actually helps you. Um, if you need to step away from your coloring and come back, you can just rehydrate and continue to color. Um, you also do not have to color with multiple coats. You can just one coat coloring like I am. And um, you can see how vibrant and bright it is even with just one coat. So in the long run, you're saving ink from your markers. Plus, you can pencil color on it. You can watercolor on it. It's amazing for ink blending. I'm trying to do just the lightest touch with that. And it's affordable. That's the best part. It's very affordable. It's 89 pounds, so you can stick it through your printer without having to worry that your printer's gonna jam or eat it. So you can print digital images and color on that. So it works great for the color cards. And that's my paper commercial for you guys. I could sit here and talk about it forever because I'm 
a paper geek, but you know. Okay, so there's the sunset that I wasn't gonna draw, but I went ahead and drew anyways. Um, so now we're gonna do some ocean. Are you guys ready? Um, I'm gonna start with B99 tonight. Cause you know, why not? Nice broad strokes, really light. Notice that like I'm only actually hitting the paper every like second or third time I pass. So really light touch. It's gonna give you lots of texture in that ocean. I'm gonna turn my paper around. And don't worry if you can't get this small of a line or this fine of a line. It's familiarity with your medium. So the only difference between you and me is that I've spent a lot more time with this marker in my hand. Um, a purple mountain mat background, you got it. I can definitely do that. Um, I'm gonna use B95 now. Um, so just the more time you spend, no, nope, that's too light. Not what I wanted. I'm gonna use B37 instead. Um, what you want to do is just spend a lot of time with your markers. And that will definitely help you to be able to get these fine lines. A little bit of coloring each day. And I say that, but I don't actually practice that. So ha ha ha. I used to, but now I own a stamp company and I don't have time to color every day. That's why I like doing these lives because it gives me time to actually color. I don't know about you, but I love watching stuff like this develop. Because right now this ocean looks like an absolute hot mess, yeah? You can say it. It's okay. You won't hurt my feel-bads. I used to have feel-bads. I don't anymore. Just kidding. My feel-bads got busted. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to that 95. Take a marker on a scrap paper and just warm up doing strokes until I get to where I can do small strokes. I'm heavy handed. Yes, again, Julie, that's learning familiarity with your marker. Um, it's exactly what you should be doing. I also, realize that people learn by repetition. That's why I like to do some of these backgrounds like twice um, or even three times. It's not because I've run out of content. It's because I know that a lot of people learn by repetition. And so seeing me do this um, same background twice in a row, slightly different, um, will actually help you to retain the information to be able to go out and do this yourself. because there's an infinite number of things that I can color for you guys. I mean, this seal or walrus could be at a zoo. He could be out in the middle of the ice-capped ocean. He could be, I mean, a whole plethora of places. But I chose to do a very similar background to what I did last night because I want you guys to be able to retain the information and sort of see it put to use in a different way.
Okay, you guys see that coming together, starting to come together? No, I'm not making Beatles songs to him. <laughs> I just told Julie, shh, you can't say that. I don't want to get in trouble. So this guy's going to be a little more tropical. We're going to, we're going to lean over into some of the like BGs. Um, <laughs> see now I'm making BG songs. Uh, 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 uh. Um, but I like to add some teals in. So I'm going over into some of my BGs to mix some of these teal colors in. So he's, he's at the, in the tropics. Maybe this is his little habitat at the Florida water park that Tyler was talking about. This little dude's hanging out in his little happy habitat place. Notice I'm taking this teal back up into here to tent the water. I want it to all look like it goes together. Okay. And I'm gonna go one lighter. Facebook jail's the new black. I know, I get in trouble all the time. It is a thing for me. <laughs> I go to Facebook jail a lot. Um, let's see. That was BG13. I'm going to pull out my hex chart just because. Um, and so I want to go... Uh, BG13 is right here in case you're looking with me. Um, I think I'm going to go BG... No, I think I'm going to go B-O-O. -O. We're going to go a little bit back into the blues, if I can find it. Okay. And this one I'm being really careful on because I don't want to drag any of those dark colors out into my ocean. Go along his tusks. I also don't want all of this blue to end up in his tusk like I just did there. Okay. So Michelle... Ew, boo. It's, it's boo. Michelle, um, plug your ears because I'm about to use the chisel nib. And I'm doing this to just kind of wash out these colors make them go back together. I'm going to put blue underneath here. Michelle hates the sound of the chisel nib on the paper. That's why I told her to plug her ears. <laughs> ah, so soothing. Not. <laughs> and I'm going to come down here, add a little texture. I'm probably going to even end up cutting this off, but I like to pretend that, you know, I'm thorough enough to finish all this. And I really don't like this line right here. Is it close to the chalkboard? No, I don't think so. Not anywhere in the same realm as fingernails on a chalkboard to me. But maybe to Michelle it is. I have no idea what show my husband's watching now. He watches weird stuff, you guys. I'm not even gonna... Um... 
No, I refill my Copics probably three or four times a year. Not too much. Yes, Barb, for sure. That would be awesome. I love when people take techniques and apply them to different things. Um, definitely my, my jam. Definitely my happy place. Okay, one more time with the chisel nib <laughs> and all the colors in the dock. Okay, there we go. So there is our little guy. So what I'm gonna do is zoom out Chippendale, Chippendale. And I'm gonna grab a card base. Um, I have a lot of pre-cut card bases. I always have them hanging out in my craft room. And then I'm gonna grab, ooh, do I have, where did I put my black paper? Do I need to cut another one? I could have swore I had black paper sitting here from last night. But maybe I'm mistaken. Oh, I do it right here. Oh, that's too small. That is not a big enough piece. Let's see, hopefully this is. Let's see if this is a big enough piece. So my card base is, oh, yep. My card base is um, four and a quarter by five and a half. So this will be cut to four and an eighth because I like everything. Um, okay. An eighth of an inch smaller by five and three eighths. So there's that. Don't cut the blue under the dock. So cut up here. So this will be cut to four. And do we want to cut this side or this side? It's not uncolored. It's like Rocky Mountains. Maybe I'll just cut a little bit off of each side. So, oh, I don't have to cut much off of here. Five and a half, five and three eighths, five and a quarter. Oh, okay. I just have to cut a little sliver off of there. Right side, left side. Doesn't matter. Okay. Beautiful. This is my Barely Art glue. Does the glue, the sound of the glue on the paper get you too, Michelle? Oh, I just hacked it off, Roberta. <laughs> I doubt he was centered to begin with. Because I just eyeballed it. Okay, and then I grab my espresso. That's worse than the chisel edge. It is loud. Yep. I only recommend Barely Art Glue. Okay, so now I'm going to do something. Um, 0.03. So see how he's got his little eye all squinted here? I'm going to draw that in. Yay, Roberta! 
And then they usually have whiskers. So I'm just gonna draw in some whiskers and I'm gonna use my white gel pen also. I'm gonna get carried away. It's okay, I always do, it's a thing. Um, I also noticed a little spot that I want to fix on his tusk. I should have done this before I glued this down, but it is what it is. Okay, I feel better about that. Okay. So now I'm gonna grab my white gel print from Pear Blossom Press and I'm going to add some highlights to his tusks. Remember really light pressure with your gel pen. I'm gonna add a couple of extra whiskers. I think we're good there. Um, the other thing I'm gonna do that I forgot to do because my head isn't, because he's old. No, none of my stamp sets have seagulls. We have the um, seagull from the Spring Break Retreat. I'm gonna add the silhouette of the sun there on the water. There you go. Okay, now back to my regularly scheduled programming. Um, I'm gonna do one more step just because, you know, why not? We're here, we're having fun, we're coloring. What could be better? So, this says, I will walrus be your friend. And I think I'm gonna use that. Yes, if you have not used the Pear Blossom Press gel pens, you totally need to. <sighs> yeah, that's the one I'm talking about, Michelle. Can I do close-up? Sure. Aw, thanks, Barb. That's so sweet. So I'm going to grab my little Misty here. I have a Misty addiction, so if you see me using a different one on every live, my deepest apology. I tend to use the black one the most, I believe, but I wouldn't swear to it. Okay. I guess I'm gonna have to put this over here because otherwise it's gonna run into him. Okay, so now you'll see a little bit of my anal retentiveness sneak out. I'm gonna make sure that I'm straight here using the lines of the Misty. I'm pretty good, good enough for government work. And then I have, this is the Rabbit Hole Designs um, Embossing Buddy and it's filled with their special kind of clay. Um, this is literally a life changer when it comes to embossing. So I do have a link, an affiliate link for Rabbit Hole Designs that I would appreciate you using if you do go to get one of these or anything else from Rabbit Hole Designs. But I promise you, this is one of the best products on the market ever. Um, so all you do is you take the cap off um, and you can see the powder is in the brush. Never, ever, ever touch the brush because the... Um, oils from your fingers will clog it up and you just brush this over wherever you're going to emboss. I get all like 
super jiggy with it and I brush it like everywhere because I'm like that. Then you just slide this up, put the cap back on and pop it down and that primes it for your next time of use. Love it, one of my most favorite tools ever. Um, you just made the best dinner, what did you make? And then I'm gonna use my Versamark and I'm gonna stamp, ink up my stamp pad here. Ink up my stamp pad, ink up my stamp. Let's get jiggy with it. Um, when I do Versamark, I always like to do it twice. Um, I don't know why, it's just an OCD of mine. So hang tight with me while I do this again. I don't even think my heat gun is plugged in, so there's that. have my embossing powder and so I'm just going to use my card base I do this a lot actually steak and twice baked potato with mushrooms and red wine reduction whoa wow so I'm going to set this over here because I'm going to clean it before I put it away Grab some embossing powder and I'm gonna put this on top of the paper and then I'm gonna put this here so just in case I have any embossing powder get away from me and yes I am brave I emboss right on top of the card but look at that there's like it's perfect every time thank you to rabbit hole designs making the most epic embossing tool. So let me plug in my heat gun real fast. Maybe, can't get it in the plug. Now, when you're embossing, you want to heat your heat gum up prior to using it. So plug your ears, y'all. Okay, now that my heat gun's warm, I'm gonna come at this. And you see the magic start to happen. from both sides just to make it smoother so there you go look at that no errant little pieces of embossing powder um yeah seriously melissa it is like literally the best ever um i cannot tell you enough good things about this and i always have problems with white embossing powder and this solved all my white embossing powder woes so there's that Oh, that's a good idea, Roberta. I just, I have a glass mat, so I just do everything. Um, so I have a link. Tyler, if you're still here, do you mind putting up my link for the rabbit hole designs? That would be amazing. Um, I have an affiliate link for the rabbit hole designs and you go to their website using my link. If you would, that would be amazing. And just look up embossing. Um, their embossing tool, it's called, hmm, Cottontail Embossing Tool, I think, maybe. Yeah, Erica does too. 
Yeah, no mo embossing freckles. Just a little glue, just a, a, a tiny bit. It's fine. It's fine. We're fine. You're fine. We're all fine. It's just a tiny bit of glue. No worries. I love the espresso though because I don't have to push very hard on it. Um, Cottontail embossing tool. That's right. And now I have this awesome card with no um, crazy... I don't even know what I'm trying to say. Uh, wiggles in it. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so I stamp the back of my card always and I sign it as soon as I find a pen. I feel like this one needs to be signed in like blue for the ocean. I usually always match my signature to what's on the front of the card. Then for extra giggles, you guys know that I can't do this without some bling. So this is my um, honey bowl. And I have candy in it, of course. I have sequins. I have black and clear. Um, and I think that since I embossed in black, I might use the black bling. Um, let me grab my crystal katana. Is that what this one is? My jewel picker. Um... Thank you. Yeah, the cork prevents warping and it makes it heat evenly. I just emboss on the back as well. So um, whatever works best for you. So um, I can't decide if I wanna use clear or if I wanna use black. Every one of those landed upside down. I think I want to use clear. Oh, thanks, Cheryl. I think I'm going to use clear. So, what I do with this is I'm going to add a couple down here. I'm always in threes. Yes, clear. Okay, I'm I'm glad y'all think so too. Um. I always add in threes because things in nature are always done in odd numbers. Um, so first off, you'll see the white glue behind this, but the glue actually dries like invisible. So you won't see the glue once it dries. Michelle, you always gotta be difficult, don't you girl? You always gotta say something different than everybody else. You always gotta throw me for a loop. I love that about you. I absolutely adore it. Don't ever change. And that glue will totally disappear, so don't worry about it. I still like black. <laughs> and then I always do um, in groups of three, like three groups of three so that I end up with an odd number as well. These particular jewels, um, oh man, I put that one upside down. I'm having a hell of a time with these tonight, let me tell you. These particular jewels are from the ton. Love them so much. Very cool company. <laughs> Making, I know, I haven't rolled my eyes at you yet, Michelle. Notice I said yet. I mean, it could still happen, just not yet. <laughs> oh, Dios mío. I don't know if the jewel picker upper thingy actually helps me or makes it worse. Hey, 
there. Oh, yes, on the blue. Yeah, Essie is a total doll. I love her. I love her. So they look white right now, but they will dry absolutely clear. And there's our little card for tonight, guys. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, I really appreciate it. And this is I Am Walrus. It is available in the shop for you if you are interested. There's also dyes available, I believe. Yep, there's dyes available. So there's that. Um, don't forget, if you need any of my links, um, I know it is her mom. Yes, they're always there together. They're super cute. If you need any of my links, you can just go to our website and there's a place that says my favorite things. And um, all of my links are listed there on my favorite things. So yep, happy 4th of July tomorrow. So you can just go So if you click on that link and it takes you to our website, you just, um, at the top, you can scroll over. If you're on your phone, you can just scroll over at the top and it'll say my favorite things. And then you can find the rabbit hole designs link there and links for other companies that I have partnered with. Um, but anyways, thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. I super duper appreciate it. And, um, I will see you all again very, very soon. Um, I will be traveling next week, so I'm not sure how um, on time my lives are going to be. Um, so I will let you know. But in the meantime, Sandy's going to be live starting tomorrow through Thursday. And it will be um, at 9.30 Central Time. So that's 8.30 Mountain Time, 7.30 Pacific, and 10.30 um, Eastern so if you are in any of those time zones, you can tune in right here and watch Sandy do lives. Um, she does Monday through Thursday, and I do Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So thank you all for joining me, and I will see you all very soon. Toodles!